Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about Reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three and in this particular video I'm going to talk to you about what is the best statistical software for researchers, PhDs, or professors. Um, so if you don't know me, I'm an associate professor of innovation, strategy, and entrepreneurship and I created this whole Reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There are so many people that helped me out that I want to pay the favor forward and help you out. So choosing your statistical software is often a really sort of complicated thing. Choosing a statistical software for most of us, whenever we jump into a PhD program or we start doing research, we want to choose the very best one. We think that there is a very best one for your particular field. And, um, you know, I'm going to be really honest with this, is that there's not really a best, best statistical software that is available. They all have sort of their pros and cons, and there is sort of best case scenarios for your statistical software. And it's kind of this, the thing that you often see people do when they jump into a PhD program is they're like, well, I'm going to do this. And... If I get this particular software, it's going to make my life so much more easier. And some of them do and some of them don't. And it just really depends on a lot of different factors. And that's what I really want to talk about here. So um, to kind of give me a bit of a background, I was an engineer back in the day. I did, my I did an undergrad in engineering. And so I did some programming and stuff like that. And I use different statistical software and I kind of go in between um, them from time to time and I sort of play with them and I see what other people are doing and it really isn't necessarily an easy thing to sort of choose to do, right? So what I would do, and I'm, I'm going to sort of talk about three of them, but then I'm going to go into a couple of other ones that you probably can sort of consider. So there's, there's data. So this is you know, in our field, um, in business administration, is kind of sort of widely varying. I'm in strategy and innovation. Um, Stata is used a lot. And there's also SPSS, I think is the IBM product, um, uh, SAS and R. And in R is kind of the open source thing. Stata or Stata or whatever you want to call it uh, is kind of like pseudo open source. So it is, um, you know, there's a company that sort of produces the software, but then there's lots of user written software. And then um, SAS is, um, you know, it's, it's sort of company produced or it's a uh, wholly um, proprietary software where, right. So um, all of these programs are really good. They're all gonna sort of do the things that you need to do in terms of statistical software. But um, I would recommend different ones for different purposes, right? So if you want uh, sort of a learning experience that in, in sort of more point and click kind of software, then SPSS is really quite powerful that way. And it makes it a lot more easier. In fact, that's how most PhDs, most researchers are gonna be trained when they start out is they're gonna be using SPSS and they jump into it that way because it's really intuitive, makes a lot of sense. That's how I um, learned it. That's how lots of people learn statistics and using different statistical software is using that. Um, you can use, another one you can use is actually Excel. Um, you can use that as well. It's pretty intuitive to learn sort of basic statistical stuff that's, that's in there. Um, now, if you use more on the long on the lines of sort of longitudinal um, data analysis, then Stata does a really good job of that. There is a lot of different longitudinal stuff that's in Stata that makes it really useful for other people and sort of different tools and tricks and stuff. I'm looking for things that change over time, right? So time um, time dependent things, and so they is. As far as I know, it still has a pretty much a jump on all the other different statistical softwares. Now, R has been really picking up um, because it's open source, so lots of people sort of contribute to that. And so open source is kind of a, a, a weird thing in the sense that it sort of produces, it's sort of self-producing. Um, and sometimes open source software is good and sometimes it's not. And it turns out that R is doing really well. Lots of people are sort of using it. And, um, you know, it's doing quite well in terms of adoption from lots of different people. But I want to point out with all these different sort of statistical techniques. Oh, and R has some, some cool graphics that I've seen that um, you can't necessarily do. Stata's graphics capabilities, still not there yet. I think it's still got a little ways to go in terms of making it a little better. Um, however, you know, each, what I want to point out is that all the different software that you're going to choose to do, and this is what PhD students, professors, whoever it is that are jumping into this for the first time, 
Um, there's a learning curve to every single software, and I have gone through this every time I pick up a software or learn a new language. Um, it's like learning a new language, right? So they're all kind of basically the same thing, and they're all kind of doing the same sort of things in the background, um, even Excel, right? So they do sort of, um, you know, that sort of basic functionality is all very similar. However, they just take a little bit of time to learn the syntax and sort of understand what they're about and their capabilities and things like that. So, um, you know, you can flip between them, but it's really difficult. There is what's called a switching cost whenever you go through that. And, and that's kind of a term in innovation that you would talk about. And it's the cost that's associated with switching between the different programs. And you do have a cost of switching between them because you forget, um, you know, the different code and stuff like that. I've done them all and I've worked with um, all of them and I do forget every single time even if it's a week or two later I'm like you know what was the code how do you actually do this and you forget it all right so you you're better off sort of picking one that you want to become a mastery in and really develop the skill in that particular one so whether it is Stata so in strategy and innovation um, you know in, in my field finance as well I believe um, you know that those particular programs, data or those particular fields are um, pretty well used. So lots of people are using them. So you probably would want to learn that because there's a critical mass. Now R is beginning to pick up. And, and so you might want to, you know, if you're learning this for the first time, you can check out R. And if there's sort of functionality that you don't have, um, well, then you can check out different software program and pro programs and things like that. Now, there are other ones that are really good. And lots of people use them as sort of specialized functions in sort of specialized things that you can possibly do. So things like MATLAB, for example, I use it. Um, you, it's got like libraries that you can load in to do all of these um, statistical techniques and simulations. I use it for simulations from time to time. Um, and the nice thing is it is sort of the mathematical computing language of um, you know of people that are in math and engineering and stuff like that so you can look at that uh, matlab is really functional it does a really good job and, and it's really fast um, it's got sort of matrix language that's built into it so you can look at some of that now python is being used a little bit more when you're going with big data and people are sort of switching with that um, hadoop and uh, that was a few years ago that people were talking about that and I think it's still kind of a big thing and so you can look at that as well in terms of the big data stuff um, c and c plus plus still really useful and you could do all of this kind of statistical techniques if you know how to program in those particular techniques and you can load data in and load it out and um, all of that kind of, sort of read it out and stuff so you can build all of this stuff it's not entirely um, tricky if you know all of it and you can actually do it. it it sort of functions in the same sort of way you could do it in visual basic as well in excel to do a lot of this programming stuff and some people actually do that um, years ago i did do a lot of visual visual basic and it works um, pretty well in terms of being able to load this stuff in um, but the critical point in terms of choosing your statistical software in terms of the best statistical software is what you want to look for is ones that are really well adopted in the field and it's one, ones that um, other people are using in your lab or your um, collaborators or colleagues and, and you want to just stick with those, right? So in strategy and innovation, lots of people use data. Um, so you'd probably use that, right? Um, and if you are in, maybe it's in, uh, you know, organizational psychology, for example, or in psychology as a field, they use a lot more SPSS. So you can use that. And the reason is it works really well for survey data um, in doing different techniques with survey data. And so it's really um, easy and intuitive to do those kind of things. So lots of people use that. So you want to use that. Um, if you are pulling data from large data sets, um, sort of finance data sets, for example, and pulling it in and you're in finance, some, a lot of people actually use um, SAS. Uh, and, and I think they're migrating to Python um, because the data sets are getting really big at this moment. Um, and, you know, lots of people are sort of doing the graphical stuff now in R and they're starting to learn R because it is really nice for graphical stuff. But you really just want to use what other people are using uh, because it's going to save your, uh, yourself a lot of time and hassle. And you don't have to necessarily explain to not only your colleagues 
how to use these different things and what these functionality are and you know what all these different things are but like you know other people you're presenting your research to and that's really important incredibly important when you're presenting your research you don't want to seem like oh they're doing something kooky in this particular obscure language that nobody else is doing and they're like ah you know do i trust those results and so you have to default to what everybody else is doing that is totally normal in every field it's like that it doesn't matter what um, particular discipline you're you're working with or you know profession you're working with you want to just go with the default because it's just easier to have this sort of common language and there's a huge literature on this um it's called the dominant design and innovation and, and you want to check that out in terms of understanding what it means but basically you're just looking for something that is functional lots of people use it that's why i use an iphone is because um, it's functional other people use it uh, it might not be the most sophisticated phone that's out there. I pay a lot more for it, but um, at the same time, it is the thing that everybody uses, right? So an iPhone is very useful that way. And so that's where you're looking for with statistical software. Don't sort of pick the thing that is really unique or different or interesting just because you want to do it. You want to pick what everybody else is doing and just de default to that because it just makes your life easier in the long run. Every single time I choose software, um, where I don't do that in terms of picking something that's unique or different or some novel thing that's happening, um, I just I end up biting myself. Um, you know, it just kind of bites me in the butt later on in terms of the amount of work and effort to sort of do this in, um, in the long run and work with that. And I end up not going and using that software or that particular thing in the future just because it's not useful. Um, anymore because not a lot of people are doing that so you just want to default with the thing that everybody else is doing I know it seems like a cop-out answer but it really is going to save you a ton of time and effort if you do this I guarantee it um, it's the best advice that I would give and it's the advice that I typically give um, anybody that would ask me and that's what my two cents are so um, anyways uh, give me a thumbs up do subscribe to the YouTube channel I do appreciate it take care and uh, have a wonderful day bye